customizing of uh, IRTF is the topic. Uh, my name is Werner Sega. I'm the general manager of VSQL, licensee partner of the German automotive industry in Romania. And I'm together with... Good afternoon. My name is Pedro Silva. I'm from OPCO, also from the VDA QMC network in Portugal. Yeah, in this way, Pedro, nice to see you. Nice to uh, see you too in this pan-European conversation from Portugal yeah. to Germany. Yeah, I, I, I like this very much because in the end we are binding three countries. Means uh, the licensee company from my side in Romania, myself working right. as a trainer in Germany, and uh, you are staying with your company in Portugal. I think this is a clear uh, sign for European cooperation. That's right. Fully agree. Yeah, <laughs> and no okay. borders and no no uh, facing the current situation. No virus can stop this. Huh? Maybe just the IT virus, but uh, therefore we have <laughs> <Maybe>. higher <laughs> but not the COVID-19. Yeah. Okay. So maybe well, we can start uh, with the questions. Maybe you can yeah. start there. Yeah, we have uh, two topics what we want to debate a little bit between us. Uh, one is how to deal with the set suppliers. And the other topic, which is current very, very present, is the topic for the remote audits. Mm -hmm. So. I propose we, we start with the setup suppliers okay. and uh, how to deal with and uh, the situation, if uh, I know it so far, is always, let me say, a relationship between three parties and often it is the case that the three parties have not really a relationship, it means um, customer is choosing and supplier and makes a contract with another supplier and set it then the supplier that he ships him some components. Yeah. And in this way, there are many, many points in detail which are not debated with all three parties on the table, which brings, of course, many, many conflicts in the daily work. And the key question for the companies is how to deal with such situation. And in my 20 years experience, I learn one thing is for sure. If the three partners do not have a clear debate and a contract where they clarify the responsibilities, it will ongoing having conflicts and the PPAP could finally not confirm. That, that's a fact for me. Yeah. Because party one, as the set supplier, ships to party two, which is the chosen supplier, uh, and both have a contract with his customer. But uh, supplier one and supplier two have not really a clear relationship or the details are not clarified. My recommendation on this point is that the suppliers clarify active his responsibilities, means they have to taking care that it is clear who in the 20 plus chapters of PPAP has to do what. How you see it, Pedro? Yeah, I see that in the same way. The responsibilities defined right from the beginning of a project, as soon as the several partners join the project, to be clearly defined who is responsible for what. Uh, and then, of course, a transparent relation in between them. Uh, very, very often we see a more uh, commercial related or uh, situations in that the supplier is against the nominated customer as well. Uh, and we can see also in audits that in the end, no one wins. It's a lose-lose situation to everybody. So to try yeah. to, to keep the mind open, uh, to go back to the IETF as well, because the IETF is, is clear, if an imposed supplier is, is not willing to submit a PPAP, is going against the requirements of the standard as well. So the customer has reasons to, to issue a, a special status even, uh, and to make sure that everybody is on the same page, because later on issues like incoming inspection, rejections, quality criteria, that needs to be clearly defined to, to everybody. 
So yeah, that's really yeah. Additionally, beside that, on the system level in the IRTF, we have clear requirements. Uh, practically, if I go one level down, that I go on the on the contract level, then the let me say the loose situation starts if in sales, which is the first of the value added processes, are not enough time is invested to clarify the responsibilities. I find it often in the many, many audits I have done that exactly there is, let me say, the main root cause that it was not clear from the beginning who has to do what and how to deal with a set of supplier. Yeah, that's and, true. That's true. Yeah. Hey. And later hey. on, you go into difficulties because as a second reason, what I can say is, that often the technical things are not clear. We all know what is a PPAP. We all know that to deal with the 22 chapters. Uh, and uh, it is clear, in, basically from the, uh, from the theoretic point, is clear what has who to do. Practically, the things are then a little bit difficult because you're dealing with three parties. And uh, if these three parties are not taking time to have a seat on the table together to clarify the responsibilities will finally, uh, for three parties, a lose situation. That's true. Good. Uh, another topic uh, that uh, we had uh, talked about for these conversations is the situation regarding auditing in these days, namely a remote audit. Uh, we have seen that, for instance, for the IETF, for the third-party audits, IETF is clear, they will not accept any type of remote auditing. Uh, in despite that ISO 19011 is talking about that situation for several years already, for the ISO, for instance, but that is clear that for the um, IETF, it will not be uh, admitted. But we have also other situations like, for instance, for companies, and we had a conversation recently, companies that are um, now facing the possibility that some of their suppliers will not survive this pandemic, that they will close their doors, and they need urgently to develop new suppliers. So the situation of a remote audit uh, can be, can be a, at least in this situation, an alternative. How do you see that, Werner? Uh, yeah, <laughs> we know that the IITF is not accepting the remote audits. I check a little bit the standards and uh, I find some uh, interesting points. Uh, let's see it at first from the point of the standard. Here I talk mainly from uh, 9001 and uh, 19011 because both are finally the base as well of the IITF 6949. Interesting is that in the 19011, we have several uh, chapters where the remote audit is accepted. Mm -hmm. and, uh, also in 9001, uh, I shared a couple of days ago by the German certification body a webinar where there uh, was working out very exactly that remote audits on the level of 9001 are absolutely accepted. But also it is clear that the IRTF don't will accept it. Forward yeah. orientated, facing the current situation, I think there will be finally also IRTF coming to this decision because there is no chance for the next months to yeah. doing audits on site. I don't think so that this is an opportunity. I count in this moment and I uh, see the situation like this that it will need a minimum half an hour, uh, half an hour, <laughs> half a year uh, mm. until this is possible to have audits on site. Yep. You know, so that means the non-direct processes, let's say purchasing or also say uh, developing HR, uh, all those uh, processes, there is an option for me minimum to have partly on-site audits. Let's see how the IITF will decide this. Exactly. We'll have to see how the pandemic is uh, evolving or not. Uh, and also the sign of the times. Technology is improving. I've heard recently, based on Industry 4.0, uh, specific, specific goggles that you can have a remote audit with someone on-site 
looking for you and transmitting the image back to you. So the technology is changing, the world is changing. So let's see if we can, all of us, also save uh, in the future, save time in terms of travel uh, costs as well. Um, also, talking with the VDA QMC, uh, when we talk about first and second party audits, the situation is different. That is depending on the customer and the, and the, the supplier for second party audits, or depending on the organization for internal audits. But also from VDA QMC, also for the, the renewal of auditor card for first and second party, they will not accept remote audits as well. They have now that special release that will increase the, the period, uh, but the, the first and second party auditors must keep in mind that they will have to find a way to do at least an internal audit to keep the qualification. Yeah, I think there are more points than just talking about uh, remote audits, because if I uh, look to this with the five M's and say methodically, we have to see uh, how we are using, as you say, and I'm uh, also underlying this, the technology opportunities will increase. Yeah. Uh, second, I think there are options in to do remote audits uh, because of the situation. And I also say we can optimize the audit process that the ODT has to send some documents in advance. And mm -hmm. also I see there are options to develop. May it took a little bit time and investing, but I think there are also options to accept for the auditor qualification remote audits. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the developing uh, is in the moment very fast. And what you know today makes tomorrow a old story. So let's see how, how it is. So, exactly. So okay. Well. Way, I think everything's... Uh, uh, I would say in run, it is developing from one hour to the other, and we do not know what what means it tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, very so, far. Good. so this was our first talk. Uh, we'll come up with a new subject for the new videos. Meantime, yeah. uh, keep safe, stay at home. We will be doing the same, and we'll be seeing each other here uh, via Teams. Uh, Thanks a lot. Uh, same to Portugal. Stay, stay safe. Taking care. And uh, I think viral. We will see us uh, in a shorter time. Uh, reality may it took a little bit more time. In this way, regards to Portugal. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.